Hello everybody and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be covering my journal in readiness for thanks September and as some of you will know already I've decided to celebrate a whole year of Creative Journaling UK by inviting you to join me in a month of gratitude journaling. So that is a way of just spending a few minutes each day saying thank you for the good things and there's a lot of research that suggests that practicing gratitude and it does get easier as you go on is a really powerful way of positively affecting our mental health and that then has a knock-on effect on all sorts of things in our lives including our physical health our relationships even the way we metabolize food is apparently all supported and helped by practicing gratitude and the positivity that it brings to our lives. Now, I suppose for me, the really powerful thing to remember is that practicing gratitude doesn't mean that everything's going fine. Um, painful things happen in life, difficult things happen. Um, maybe for some, September is a particularly difficult month, maybe this year or every year. Maybe it holds some painful anniversaries for you. And so we're not pretending that by being grateful, everything's going brilliantly and that life is perfect. Very far from it, uh, particularly for some of us. And the idea with the gratitude is that it actually helps us get through the difficult things rather than negating them. So I am inviting you via my social media. I'll put some links down below this video and also um, today as I'm speaking to you to join me and to see how it goes and to see what happens. And we'll share some of our insights and maybe some of our photographs um, online. We've got a Facebook group and a Facebook page and obviously this YouTube channel. And not to mention the creativejournaling.co.uk website. Don't forget to put two L's in journaling. So I'm really hoping that this will be an amazing experience. I don't know how it's going to go. So I'm going to cover my journal in this paper, I think. It's from the Back to Basics range by Dovecraft. And I've spread some tacky glue on the front cover of my journal. And I'm just letting it soak in a bit. And then I'm going to stick it down. Now you'll notice that I'm actually leaving a little gap round the edge because I find that it's much neater if you trim it rather than try and match up the lines precisely. When you're covering a journal, I think the best thing to do is to forget everything you learned in primary school. And uh, you'll see here I'm just putting the glue straight on the cover. I'm not going to fold the edges over, but I am going to trim them. And that, I think, will leave a really neat finish. So I've got that front cover there glued down nicely. And I'm going to do the back next. Now the key thing is when you do the back to fold it really nice and tight and I'm starting to tell it there where I want the paper to go and I'm actually pulling it quite harshly. I think I'm going to trim off some of the excess just to make it easier to do the fold. So luckily this paper has got a nice regular pattern. I like this paper, it kind of reminds me of my granny's wallpaper, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, that kind of slightly vintagey, regular pattern look. And I feel like, for me, that's going to go well with my idea of wanting to, to do practice with this. I know it's not always going to be easy. Um, I'm not always going to feel thankful this month, I know that. Um, that's kind of not the point in a way. The point is to think, well, what are the things that I'm grateful for here? There are always some. Why am I grateful for them? And what would life be like without them? And to focus on some of the good stuff that is around and to note, you know, why it's good for me. Um, so I'm just spreading this out. You don't have to spread it with a spreader, but because I'm using wet glue, if I don't spread it quite thinly, it might make the paper bubble. 
and I don't want that. You can just use Prit for this, but I find that if you spread the wet glue right up to the edges like I'm doing there, you get a better finish when you trim it and it will stick really nicely. And of course, if it doesn't stick right up to the edges, then you just shove your, the nozzle of your glue in the edge and put some more glue in there to make sure. Now, I'm trying not to stick all the pages together, um, but if I do, then you can just separate them quite easily with a ruler afterwards. So that's the back covered in glue. Now, this is the bit that I want to get right. I want to get this paper really tight across the whole cover, but I also want the cover to be able to open. So I'm actually exerting quite a lot of backward pressure on that to get it folding over nicely. And you'll see for this A5 journal I've got here, um, with a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, there's not a lot of leeway on either side. So I almost, I almost, almost didn't fold it enough. Or I, or I mean, I almost left too much of a margin there, but I'm just gonna get away with it if you look on the back. So that's going round there nicely now, and I'm gonna keep pressing it while it dries. And then in a minute, once it's all nice and dry, I'll trim it. I'm using a hand-stitched journal here. Staple journals are okay, but if you're gonna stick a lot of stuff in them and get some bulk, you really need it to be stitched because the staples will pop out after a while. So this is the journal that I'll be using in the kits that you can get um, from creativejournaling.co.uk by emailing me. Um, I'll put the links down below. And I'm holding a workshop in Edinburgh on the 8th of September, but uh, not everyone's within reach of that. So um, there's lots of ways of getting involved and I'll be posting on my website to show you what those are. So uh, I'll put the link to that down below as well. So I think that's drying now quite nicely, but I'm gonna leave it till it's really dry before I start trimming it. And I'm still just easing the paper around those corners and then I'm gonna start to just pop it over the edges there so that when I trim it, it'll all be neat. Now, I feel like the front of this journal's a bit dull and I need something on it. And uh, I went to my my standard go-to for inspiring pictures, which is Daphne's Diary. If you don't know this, I do love this very much. You can get it from Big Sainsbury's, Big Tesco. And this is the latest edition. I think there's another one coming out soon. It's just full of really lovely pictures and stickers and craft ideas and all sorts of crafty goodness that you can chop up and put in your journals and I use these a lot and by the time I finished with one of these there's li virtually nothing of it left and I also always have a healthy supply of these at my workshops so there's lots of nice things going on there. So I've cut this picture out and to me that so speaks of calm, just calm and peace so some roses on a flowery tablecloth and a cup of tea. And I know that every time I come to this journal, I'm going to feel inspired and peaceful just because of that little picture on the front. Now, the other element I want to put is this gratitude journal tag. And these pieces come from the kit, the gratitude journaling kit from Creative Journaling UK. If you don't like that lettering, you can write what you like on the back. And this is also double-sided that's a sort of brownier version but I like the purple and I've put the lettering there in the same purple to match it so I think that's going to be nice it's quite a thin card you could stick it inside without it bulking up but it's just going to add a little bit of dimension so while that's drying some more I'm going to stick these together and I'm going to use wet glue again but because it's card so it'll take the glue nicely but I'm not going to go right to the edge because I don't want glue spreading all over my backing. Because I think on the dark colour that's going to show up not too nicely if there's glue poking out. This glue, this Colal Tacky glue, it does um, dry nice and clear, but it, it can make a bit of a mess. So the good thing about wet glue is you've got a wee bit of a wiggle room. And I think that's just about straight there. 
So I'll just press that down with the heel of my hand and let that dry as well. Okay, I think we're ready to trim this off now. So I'm going to start on the back cover. I have stuck these together a little bit, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to stick things over it all anyway. Um, so just trim right up to the cardboard. And the card is, provides a kind of stopper for the scissors. So if you're using feel, you can really, I'm almost not looking at this, I'm using the feeling of the card against the scissors to um, to get right up to the edge there. And you can tell, you know, if it starts becoming too stiff, you're cutting the card. And if it's too easy, then you're just on the paper and you're not up against the edge. So that's coming along there. This journal that's coming with kits has got lovely thick cartridge paper. It'll take paint. It won't bleed with most sorts of pen. And I really like it. I'm going to do another video with actually setting up my journal. And I am going to be putting quite a lot of paint just as backgrounds to my pages, I think, as well as plenty of inspiring pictures and all the usual washi tape that I seem to find essential for any journal page and I've just gone a bit too far into the card there but I think I'll get away with it there we go and then this edge is pretty much up to the edge actually I didn't mean to do that but it's not going to matter there we go that looks fairly neat and there's absolutely no card poking out down there which is what I wanted so there's the front and I think I'm going to just glue that on like that, nearer the spine than this side. And I'm going to use the pattern as a guide so that I get that straight. I am notoriously bad at making things squint, but I've kind of stopped bothering about it. It just is how it is. There we go. So I'm using Prit for this because this is thin magazine paper. And if I used wet glue, it would buckle. And I don't want that. So... I want to make sure it's right up to the edges and so I'm just pressing right up to the edges with my finger behind and that should give me a nice coverage right up to those corners. So let's see where's the pattern going. There we go, that'll do. Pull it that way a little bit. It doesn't have to be exact, it's my journal, so if it's not perfect, that's just fine. There we go. And then I'm going to put that, I think, up there. Great, that's looking just how I want it. I like this purple, giving it a bit of a punch, that dark purple there. And quite like the fact that it's not black. I was wondering how best to do the lettering for you all, if you're getting the, the pack, and just decided actually not to make it black because there's something sort of softer about the purple and then I found this gorgeous purple card which I thought we could back the tags with so that's how it's worked out right I really have got a bit too much glue on there but because it's going on something quite pale I don't think it's going to matter well I am going to remove that blobby bit there just so it doesn't come oozing out too much there we go so let's get that on there and I think we're about done. So the next stage will be to start to set up my journal so that when I come to it each day, I'm planning to spend about 10 minutes a day. It's about the max I can probably realistically do. So when I come to it each day, it'll just be easy to fill in a page. So I'm going to be doing another video where I'm going to set up my pages in advance. And for those of you coming to the workshop, we'll be doing that at the workshop too. And also just looking at some hints and tips on how to do gratitude journaling and why it's such a good idea. You know, why is it worth putting in the time? So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and then you'll get the next one when it comes in the next week or so. And if you'd like to get involved, 
do get in touch with the links down below. Thanks very much. Bye.